Uh, I am Danny. I live in the next town over. Uh, on the uh, issue of chain CPI, you, yep. you took on the president, you took on Senator Murray, and you took on took them all on. And you took on Paul Ryan. Yep. You showed a lot of leadership. We won. We won. All right. Okay. And you showed leadership. And my question is, will you continue as president with that type of leadership? All right. I'm sorry. Your first name is Danny. Danny. All right, Danny, here you go. All right. All right. Danny asked a very good question about a very, very important issue. Danny, thank you for raising it. In New Hampshire and in Vermont and all over this country, we got millions of seniors who are trying to survive on twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars a year of Social Security. That's it. It's their whole source of income. You tell me. Tell me if you're 80, 85 years of age, how you survive on $12,000 a year. How do you buy the food that you need? How do you heat your home? How do you buy the medicine and the health care that you need on $12,000, $13,000 a year? You don't. The answer is you live day to day and you struggle and you live under a great deal of stress. So in the middle of all of this, in the middle of a time when senior poverty is increasing, when people are struggling to keep their heads above water, Republicans and some Democrats came up with a brilliant idea. And the brilliant idea was to go forward with what is called a chain CPI, which is a fancy term for cutting cost of living adjustments for Social Security, for the elderly and the disabled. Anyone here know what the COLA, last COLA was this year that seniors on Social Security receive, who knows what it was? Zero. zero. But for some people, zero COLA, cost of living increase, was too much. It's true. They want to cut it. As Danny indicated, what I did is a number of years ago formed a caucus in the Senate called the Defending Social Security Caucus. And what we said, it will be over our dead bodies if you cut Social Security for seniors and the disabled. And, and what we did is to work with senior organizations all over the country, the National Committee to Defend Social Security and Medicare, the AARP, other senior groups. We brought in millions of names in petitions, and we ended up beating back the effort to cut Social Security. But that's only a partial victory because the goal should not be just to defeat efforts to cut Social Security. The goal should be to expand benefits for people who desperately need them. So how do you do that? Well, it's not hard to do. First of all, anyone who tells you that Social Security is going broke is not telling you the truth. Social Security has a trust fund of $2.7 trillion can pay out every benefit owed to every eligible American for the next 19 years, okay? Now, 19 years means that we're not in a crisis, but it does mean that we should act as soon as possible. What do we do? What's the solution? Who tells me? Who wants to tell me? All right, what does that mean in English? We want to make uh, Social Security payments uh, paid by people who earn more than a very small amount of money. Right. Okay. So here's the, what you got right now. You got somebody making 118000 You're probably not, but we'll <laughs> give you. And we'll let you make $10 million. All right? You happy? Yeah. All right. <laughs> she ends up paying the same amount into the Social Security Trust Fund as he does. Okay. So he's paying 6.2%. She's going to pay a much smaller percentage. If we do nothing more than say, we don't have to start at 118, you start at $250,000 a year, very small number of Americans make that small percentage, and you have them pay the same percentage of their income into the Social Security Trust Fund, we can expand benefits for all people on Social Security and extend the solvency of Social Security until 2065. And that is exactly what my legislation does.